You're watching Local 44 Morning Brew, local news that matters. At this place in history, we're in Shoreham with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. What are we talking about today? So a little quiz for you today, uh -oh. Amanda, right? Quiz, you got this one. Okay. So there were two presidents from Vermont, right? Calvin Coolidge and Chester Arthur. Absolutely. How many vice presidents were there from Vermont? Two? Those two? Well, so yes, somewhat of a trick question. So yes, both of those served as vice presidents, but there was one more guy, and I think the sign over our shoulder mm. gives it away. I was trying not to cheat. Yeah, Levi Morton, <laughs> born right here in Shoreham, Vermont, 1824. What do we know about his early years here? So he's one of those kind of classic self-made guy sort of story. So he was born to a, a reverend who was a reverend at the church behind us here in 1824. Grew up in Shoreham and then later moved on to Springfield, Vermont. His parents couldn't really afford to send him to college, so he learned a, a trade. He started working in country stores. He worked his way up from a clerk to a manager to let's call it a br branch manager uh, for a store in Hanover, New Hampshire. He ended up owning a series of stores. Then he, then he started trading in dry goods, then textiles, and then he started trading with textiles across the Atlantic Ocean. And that turned into such a, a large uh, enterprise that he founded an investment bank. Now, all of this is happening around the time of the American Civil War, shortly after the American Civil War, and this kind of transatlantic banking made a ton of money for a lot of people. Morton was one of them. Another guy you may have heard of, J. Pierpont Morgan, actually his father, House of Morgan, huge banker, as we call these guys, robber barons of the day. Morton was one of them. And so he ended up living in Manhattan of one of his homes. He had a beautiful home in Rhinebeck, a cottage in Newport, and uh, decided to shift his eyes towards politics. Okay, so made the shift from investment banker to vice president, or was there something else in between? So he did congressman first. Okay. So he's congressman from uh, New York, uh, representing uh, Manhattan. He was, a, he was a big wig in the Republican Party. Ended up becoming um, Harrison's running mate. And so he became uh, vice president in 1889, elected in 88, vice president in 1889, served for one term, then came back to New York, ended up running for governor of New York, and he served as the governor of New York um, for a term as well. He also, within there, served as ambassador to France and then kind of lived out the rest of his life as a, as a country gentleman. So what do you have here? So I did do a little digging in the Historical Society archives, and I thought this was safe enough to bring out on a snowy day, but this is an election medal for when and Harrison and Morton were uh, elected president and vice president. And they would hand these out. And so it's got Washington, D.C. on one side, and then this kind of really cool double portrait Whoa, of neat. both Harrison and Morton on the other side. So, you know, a little bit of presidential politics right here in Vermont. At this place in history. You're watching Local 44 Morning Brew, local news that matters.